Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Tech Talk with SDM. This monthly program will be a combination of client stories and how-to technology tips. Since this is our first episode, we'd like to introduce ourselves. The SDM Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3 with a mission to provide educational programs and services to non-technical people, facilitating easier access to information through the use of technology. In everyday language, this means helping people use email, the web, digital photography, online music, and all of the other ways that people interact, learn, and participate in society using phones, tablets, and computers. SDM accomplishes this by offering free one-on-one -on -one appointments and small group lessons with our professional associates to learn what interests them. SDM staff are highly trained and very patient, and they work with clients at the client's pace. So how did we come to be? SDM Foundation, the nonprofit, was created by Stuart Donald McIntosh in 2015 by a bequest upon his death. Because of this, we're in a very fortunate position to be able to provide professional help to people without any cost to them. So who was Stuart McIntosh? Mr. McIntosh was born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland, where after the death of both of his parents, he attended the university, received degrees in chemistry and library science, and began to make his way in the world. Stewart's early business focus was to make data more accessible to the actual business user. He started designing printed forms and Cardex systems and eventually made his way to the hubs of early computing at Stanford and later at MIT in the 1960s. He was fond of saying that he did the same work all of his life, only the tools changed over time. He was a voracious reader and followed technology trends, medical advances, and politics all his life. Stuart wanted to be able to help people use technology to make their lives richer. He realized that the advantages of using technology were enormous, but that it was very difficult for people not already in the know to gain access. Even the specialized language is a barrier to using technology. He hoped that others could benefit from assistance focused on what they wanted to do, not on what the computer was able to do. His view was that the computer should work for the user, not the other way around. Stuart was always pushing to use technology to mechanize his ideas, and it never could quite catch up. While he died a man of means, he grew up with very little, and he was generous in his assistance to others. So how did the shop at 465 Main Street get started? The executive director at SDM, Kristen Thorpe, was given the mission of the foundation and chose to open the shop at 465 Main Street in Melrose to give effect to that mission. The shop opened in July of 2016 with three employees. The first summer was slow as we got word out that we were here, but in the fall of 2016, both of the printed papers in Melrose wrote articles about SDM and the rest is history. At the moment, SDM has seven employees, both full and part-time, all are paid, we do not have volunteers. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 4 and our newly expanded Saturday hours from 9 to 2. So what do we do? Most of our appointments are one-on-one. -on -one. An SDM associate sits with the client for an hour and works on whatever the client wants to learn. From our 2019 annual report, you can see that we have helped over 1,100 people to date. We had 2,744 one-on-one -on -one appointments last year, and in addition, 970 people dropped in and received help. There was one small group lesson available each day, and while we viewed this as more of an idea generator, we did have 326 people attend those lessons. At SDM, we are always looking for new ways to meet the needs of our clients, and for this reason, we offer shop talks at SDM on Thursdays, which are a more conversational setting. We offer lessons for students during vacation weeks and the summer. And we have recently begun a technology for small business discussion. And we have a photo club drop in time. We also participate in many community events such as trick or treating, 
the Victorian Fair, Parent University, and others. So what do people come for? Whether they drop in, come for a one-on-one -on -one appointment, come to a small group lesson, or join into a shop talk discussion, the range of topics they come for is vast. Every day is different at SDM. The range of questions, problems, and challenges that we deal with is hugely varied and we never quite know what each day will bring. But there are definitely some questions that we get asked more than others. So we decided to take a look back at 2019 and see what the most popular topics covered at our one-on-one -on -one appointments were. Right at the top of the list is phone. Whether it's setting up new phones, teaching people how to use their phone, from flip phones to smartphones, backing up or transferring data from one phone to another, or running updates. No question is too basic. Next up is website. Over the past year, we've helped an increasing number of small businesses with their websites and social media, providing guidance on website hosting and building, teaching businesses how to update and maintain their own websites, and helping them get the most out of their social media efforts. Email is another common topic. Finding ways to manage and organize the huge amount of email that we all get, from unsubscribing, to filing or labeling, to creating rules. Many of our customers are looking to reduce the overwhelm that they often feel associated with their email accounts. And that doesn't even begin to cover the subject of problems with receiving and sending emails. And on the subject of managing and organizing, photos is another frequent topic. Making sure that photos are organized, backed up, and synced across devices, or learning how to share photos with others are very big and common problems. Passwords and security also come up often with questions including how to set strong passwords and how to remember them, how to manage passwords effectively, how to keep devices and accounts secure, and how to avoid online scams and viruses. We also reset a lot of passwords. Many of our clients are referred to us from organizations like Mass Hire, so we cover topics such as basic computer training, specific software training, such as Word and Excel, and writing resumes. We also help people with an increasingly common online application process which can be very daunting to those who are unfamiliar with using computers. In addition to this, we have many clients who simply want to learn more about the devices that they own. Whether it's a tablet, a Windows laptop, or a Mac, we take people through the basics and help them get the most out of their device. At the other end of the spectrum, our staff also have experience with more advanced software applications, such as Photoshop, InDesign, iMovie, and Camtasia, to name a few and we have helped many people wishing to learn a new skill. We also have a number of kids who regularly come to learn how to code. No two days are the same. Some clients visit us once and some come many times. We never know who's gonna drop in or what questions we might get asked. We often learn as much as our clients as we work to solve problems together. We love what we do and we look forward to helping many more people during 2020 make an appointment and spread the word. Thank you. This is the homepage of our website, sdmfoundation.net. Up at the top, you can always choose one of the tabs if you already know where you'd like to go. But on the homepage, you can see where we're located and how to contact us, as well as look at some of our current staff members or jump right into some of our latest blog posts or continue looking at them on the next page of available posts. To learn more about us, go ahead and click on Learn More About Us. Here you can see our mission statement, our benefactor Stuart Donald McIntosh, and a little bit about his life. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see a bit more about our team members here at STM. Now back at the top, you can see a couple of articles about us in the news, as well as the ability to click on blog. On our blog, you can see recent posts, 
as well as archive posts, or choose a category about a topic that you know you're interested in. As well as subscribe to our blog via email, just as I am doing now. Now that we're subscribed to the blog, why don't we go ahead and check out some of the recent posts. If you're looking for information on something specific, head over to Topics. There, you'll be able to choose from a wide variety of categories that cover various frequently asked questions and things that come up often in today's society. In our shop, we'll take you to a page that shows a calendar of what we've got going on this month. such as drop-in events, as well as shop talks, and just general ideas that we're mulling over each day. Here, you can also find more detailed information about how to get to our location as well as about parking in the area. Don't hesitate to contact us to set up an appointment and get to learning something new. Another place that you can find SDM is on Pinterest. Pinterest is a wonderful website uh, fashioned after community bulletin boards. Each person can have multiple bulletin boards where they pin items that they've found across the web. They can be videos, pictures, articles. You can curate bulletin boards around topics that you're interested in, such as a vacation you want to take or home projects that you want to do. SDM Foundation has a Pinterest board uh, multiple boards where we pin articles that we write and articles that we find that we feel would be especially pertinent for our clientele. So you can go to Pinterest and if you like our page, um, like our boards, uh, when we post uh, new articles you will see them pop up in your Pinterest feed. So if you haven't been on Pinterest before, you might want to check it out. It's a great way to organize the information that you find on the web so that you can find it later and that you can find other similar items that other people have found. So it's sort of like a curated search engine. If you go directly to SDM Foundation's Pinterest page, you'll be able to see all of our boards. Here are some examples of boards that we have, and it says underneath the name of the board how many articles or blog entries we have pinned on that board. We are pinning new articles all the time. We are entering our own blog entries as we go along, and so this information is relevant, it is timely, and it is varied. So we think that you might find that the SDM Foundation Pinterest board would be a useful site for you to visit. The final online resource at SDM is our newsletter. You can sign up to receive it. It comes in email format every other week and you'll find each one is about a topic and has links to information on our website and external to our website, as well as additional information about things that are going on in the shop. So if you would like to sign up for it, or if you would like to see some of our past issues, you can go to our website, scroll down to the bottom of the home page, and you will see down here in the left-hand side a subscription link and a link to the archive. If you follow the link to the archive, you will see approximately a year's worth of our past issues. You can click on any one of them to go ahead and see what a single issue looks like. This was our issue that came out in January, and it was an overview of 
2019 at SDM. Browsing the web, and in particular searching, has become a new national pastime. Even many, many people who do it regularly don't really understand the process. This short tutorial is designed to give you a broad understanding. So first of all, you need three things in order to browse the web. You need a device such as a smartphone, tablet, or computer. You need a connection to the internet for that device. This can be cellular on the phone, Wi-Fi, or a wired connection and you need a program on that device called a browser. So let's go through each of these in turn. Nearly all modern devices are built to access the internet. Smartphones generally have a cellular data feature in the phone plan that is purchased for the phone. If there is no cellular data in your area, then the internet functions only will work when the phone is on Wi-Fi. Tablets, both Android and iPads, can be purchased as Wi-Fi only or cellular capable. Computers are generally not cellular capable and will need either Wi-Fi or a wired internet connection. There are many browsers available on all of the devices. A browser is a program that accesses the internet, downloads a web page, and displays it for you. Some of these browsers are specific to one or more devices, such as Safari, which is only available on Apple devices, and Edge, which is available on window devices. But others are available on all devices, such as Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. So all browsers are built to accomplish the same purpose, to locate a web page on the internet using an address we call a URL, and to display it on your device. In this, they should all work nearly identically. So the browser is pretty interchangeable. And for our purpose at the moment, we will assume that it doesn't matter which one you use. Every browser can be set to open up to any web page that you choose. This is referred to as your home page. If you want to open the browser and see your email, you can set it up that way. If you prefer your browser to open to a search page, then you can set it to do that. More importantly than which browser you use is which search engine you choose to use. The most popular search engine at this time is Google. So let's just review that. Google makes a browser called Chrome and they have a search engine called Google. You can use Google's search engine with any browser. If you use Safari, you can still choose to use Google as your search engine. So examples of search engines are Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, or Yahoo. There are many others, but those are the main ones. Each search engine will determine how they provide matches for your search terms, as well as how those re results are going to be displayed to you. The search engine is the one that sells the ads that you will see on your search results. So each search engine is going to provide different ads. Those are much bigger differences than whether you are looking at these search results using Chrome or Firefox as your browser, for example. So let's look at a few examples. Let's say we're looking for information about the wildfires in California. First, we can use the same search engine in two different browsers and see what the results look like. What you can see here is Safari on the right and Chrome on the left, both using the Google search engine. We've entered California wildfires in both sides and you will see that the search results are pretty much identical. We'll scroll here to show you what is on the right hand side as I made the windows a little bit smaller but because Google is the search engine, it doesn't matter which browser you're using, the search engine returns the search results that it finds the most relevant to you. So that's our first example. Now let's compare that to the results from a search engine, you, different search engines using the same browser. In this case, let's use Chrome and let's use a Yahoo search engine and the Google search engine. As you can see, the look and feel is a little bit different. 
the results are not exactly the same. The different search engines have resulted in different matches. And let's just review how to read the results of a search. In this case, using Chrome and Google. The matching pages are listed on the left hand side and on the right hand side is Google's summary of what it thinks you're looking for. People also ask are additional questions that people searched for. The section about videos is just that, a section of videos. Always evaluate the source of the documents which you can find in the URL. There's also a section where you can refine your search to, for example, in this case, only images of the fire. How about if we were to search for something quite different, like car rental prices in Boston? So we'll type in car rental prices in Boston, excuse me here, and what we see, first of all, is that we're still on the images search, so we'll switch back to the all. But in this case, there is no single answer on the right-hand side, only page matches on the left-hand side. You can see how intricate the subject of searching the web can be. For additional help, feel free to make an appointment at SDM, and we can help you understand the details better.